This is Android 40. It's launching on Google Pixel devices imminently before hitting Samsung, OnePlus, and everyone else's phones in the coming weeks and months. By the time you're watching this, maybe it's already on your phone. And if it isn't, it's almost certainly going to be on the Android phone you might be thinking about buying in 2024. Following Google's long tradition of dessert-based codenames, Android 14 is Upside Down Cake, a somewhat obscure baked treat which, according to Wikipedia, reaches its 100th birthday this year. So why not celebrate with a slice, perhaps alongside the Android 15 codename confection, Vanilla Ice Cream? Before we get into the really meaty features of Android 14, though, what about the Easter egg? Each Android version has one of these little animations, and in Android 14, it's taken on a cosmological theme. Tap repeatedly on the right menu item, and you'll arrive in your little pixelated ship in a mystery star system. And these readouts tell you where you are, including your distance to your local star. Once you've found that, it's then easier to track down all your local planets and other bodies, moons and satellites in that system. That's about all there is to this game, there's no way to win per se, but it is pretty neat. And it also ties into the Android 14 logo being a recreation of the Apollo 14 mission patch. Anyway, the rest of Android 14 will look a little bit different depending on which brand of smartphone you're using. But new Android versions come to Pixels first, of course, so we're going to lead with the changes we're seeing on this new version of Android in the latest Google phones. And on Pixel, there are a couple of changes that actually take inspiration from Apple's latest features in iOS 16 and 17. The most obvious instance of iOS imitation can be found on the lock screen. Android 14 now allows you to set different wallpapers on your home and lock screens, and it's been hinted that the Pixel 8 series will include some neat live wallpapers that play into this new capability. The other thing you'll see here is this new carousel of lock screen clocks that replace the default numeric readout that you get in Android 12 and 13. You can choose colors for these from the material palette, and each of these has their own little sequence of animations that can take you from the hollowed out version that you see on the always on display to the full screen variant, depending on whether or not you have any notifications waiting. We've already seen this kind of lock screen customization from Samsung and others taking after the very similar feature on the iPhone 14. Of course, what we're not yet seeing is any kind of support for lock screen widgets. That was a feature Android tried and eventually abandoned more than a decade ago. But some of the clock styles here do include a weather readout, so it's possible more information could be added here over time. The other significant visual change is something that's been a slow burn since the earliest days of Android 13. This is the predictive back gesture, which can show you which app or page within an app you're going to go back to when you swipe back. As well as looking different to previous Android versions with this little bubble effect that takes on your theme colors, you can see the previous panel here gradually shifting into view. And the other great thing about this is it gives you a better idea whether going back is going to dump you out of the app you're currently in or just send you back one level within that app. Apps will need to be updated to properly support this, so for quite a while, unfortunately, you're going to be seeing a mix of some apps with that new animation and others with just the regular snapback effect. There's another interesting gesture change that affects how you can share content between apps on Android 14. The new version now supports dragging and dropping content between apps. Whereas before, when you grabbed an image or whatever then swiped up, it would release the content that you previously grabbed. Now you can grab it and drag it within another app. For example, you can pick up a shot here from Google Photos and drag it into the Messages app as an attachment. There's definitely a little bit of trial and error involved here, but it's a neat addition that brings Android's drag and drop capabilities in line with that of iOS. Besides which, Android 14 does make some minor tweaks to the UI in places where you'd have to be as much of an Android nerd as I am to actually notice them. Toggle switches look a little different now, particularly when they're disabled, and the charging indicator that flashes up when you plug in has been given a little more visual prominence, briefly showing your charging percentage. Speaking of the battery, Android 14 will expose new information around battery health, letting device manufacturers or perhaps even third-party apps show you details like charge cycles, which in turn can help them calculate a battery health score like the one you'd see in iOS. Right now, the UI for this stuff isn't in Android 14, but third-party apps can access the underlying information. Generally, this isn't something you'll need to worry about, but a battery health score could help you diagnose the issue if you are running out of juice more quickly than you're expecting. As for your physical health, the Health Connect component that was added last year as a way to help fitness apps share data on Android is now part of the OS itself in Android 14. This means it can still be updated via the Play Store, but is now a system component, giving it lower level access to your phone. 
Essentially, think of this as Health Connect fulfilling some of the same roles as Apple Health has on the iPhone. Something that's close to the OS that sucks in data from other apps and lets them all talk to each other as they need to. All of which is good news whichever fitness platform you're using, whether it's Fitbit, Google Fit, Samsung, or something else entirely. Android's loadout of accessibility features is becoming more useful in Android 14 with the addition of LED or screen flashes for notifications. This doesn't mean the good old notification LED is returning to pixels, but rather that you can use the rear LED flash as an oversized notification indicator, which could be useful for those with reduced vision or hearing. And there's a similar feature to flash the screen a particular color when you get a notification or when an alarm is sounding. Speaking of alarms, the battery hit of apps that need to set alarms or alarm-like notifications should be reduced in Android 14 as Google streamlined the way Android handles background processes affecting timers of this kind. Meanwhile, accessibility-wise, Android 14 makes it easier for folks requiring a higher zoom level to read text more legibly. The maximum text zoom level is being raised to 200%, and the new non-linear text scaling means that smaller text can get boosted a lot, while headings and other text that's already big doesn't get blown up to a ridiculous degree. Google is also building on the app-specific languages setting added in Android 13 to make it easier to use different kinds of regional settings in a way that's distinct from your language setting, things like days of the week and temperature units. That means, for example, if you want to keep your language set to US English without worrying about what a Celsius is, Android 14 can let you opt in to continuing to see temperatures in glorious degrees Fahrenheit. The idea of having this as a system level setting is so that apps don't need to build out their own settings UX for all of this stuff, which just makes life simpler for everyone. Android is also getting better support for gendered languages like French and German thanks to the new Grammatical Inflection API, basically making sure the system knows the gender of the user so it can say and ask things in a more natural and grammatically correct way. There are countless new security improvements and tweaks in Android 14, but we're going to touch on just a few of the important ones here. First off, as an added convenience, Android 14 can be set to automatically confirm your PIN after entering it without needing to hit enter. A bunch of manufacturer customizations already do this, and it's been a favorite feature in custom ROMs for years. And it's also easier to avoid giving your PIN away to shoulder surfers with the new option to hide visual feedback as you're inputting it into the phone. Meanwhile, Google continues its trend of locking down apps' access to your photos and other media. The new Universal Photo Picker introduced in Android 14 addressed this to an extent, but now Android 14 lets you restrict the photos that apps can access even if they aren't using this new Photo Picker. If you choose to allow access to only selected photos, then as far as the app is concerned, your other media doesn't exist. It can't see it. It makes this function a bit more like iOS and means better security for the photos on your device. Root certificates are now updatable via Google Play System Updates, aka Project Mainline. Basically, these are the certificates that make sure it's possible to use the internet securely. But if one of the bodies that issues these certificates is compromised, that's potentially very, very bad. All Android owners would need to wait for an over-the-air update to fix this. With Android 14, these certificates are updatable without upgrading the entire OS. Basically, Google is protecting the ecosystem against a very unlikely but also very bad contingency. Plus, in Android 14, it's no longer possible to directly install apps built to target anything older than Android 6 Marshmallow. That's because a lot of malicious apps try to target older versions to get around the tighter security in newer versions. Older versions were much less strict about things like location and file system access. Google already limits which OS versions apps on the Play Store are allowed to target, but now there'll be a system level limit too, affecting APK files downloaded onto the device. But if you still want to take Flappy Bird out for one last spin, you'll be able to sideload it by the command line. This change just affects installations using the phone itself. As with every Android version, there are features unearthed in pre-release builds of Android 14 that for whatever reason haven't made it into the final version of the OS. The big one that was spotted early on by developer Michelle Rahman was app cloning, the feature that exists in One UI and many other flavors of Android that lets you use multiple instances of an app on the same phone. Typically, folks will use this to run WhatsApp or other social apps with multiple accounts. It's possible this may pop up in a future Pixel feature drop, but Google isn't saying anything official yet. Meanwhile, Android 14 will, according to Google's Hiroshi Lockheimer, support satellite communication. But it's likely we'll need to wait for new Google hardware to emerge before we see what form that will actually take. Once again, that would only be a good thing, considering the reports over the past year of the very similar feature on the iPhone being generally useful to folks in an emergency. Android 14 is more secure, more useful, and more accessible. 
It's taken some inspiration from recent additions to iOS, but of course that flow of ideas always runs in both directions anyway. Everyone borrows features from everyone else. We're still only a couple of releases into the current Android design era, and so the lack of dramatic changes to the way Android looks isn't necessarily too surprising. But one thing I'm hoping to see over the next year is greater adoption of that predictive back gesture, which could help navigation on Android feel more natural, especially to anyone switching over from an iPhone. If you're using Android 14 right now or you've been trying out the beta over the past few months, then hit the comments to let us know what you think of it so far, and be sure to subscribe so you don't miss our coverage of the next wave of Pixel devices coming very soon. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.